Monica Roberts came from an affluent family in Stillorgan, South Dublin. She was 24 when the First World War broke out, in August 1914. Along with a group of like-minded friends, she founded the Band of Helpers to the Soldiers, with the aim of sending home comforts, such as sweets, gloves, tobacco, writing paper and watches, to the men at the front. Included in each parcel was a letter from Monica, or one of the Band of Helpers, and Monica engaged in long correspondences with several soldiers and airmen. The recipients of the parcels were predominantly members of the Royal Dublin Fusiliers, as well as some in the Royal Flying Corps, and prisoners of war in German captivity. The Monica Roberts Collection, now part of the Royal Dublin Fusiliers Association Archive, held at Dublin City Library and Archive, contains many excellent examples of First World War era postcards, including several rarer and more expensive hand-embroidered examples. However, the collection is made up almost exclusively of replies from service personnel and only contains one letter written by Monica herself. My dear men, this is just a line to wish you all the very best of good luck in November and hoping you will like the contents of the three cases we are sending out to you this month. I was so delighted to get a postcard the other day from W. Clark of the Expeditionary Force saying he has liked his parcel from the Band of Helpers. I am so very glad to think that these things arrive safely after all. Everyone says it is so hard to get things through. I haven't been able to make up separate parcels this month as I had so many things sent to me and the parcels weighed extra heavy so I put all the cigarettes in one case and the rest of things tied up in the socks. I hope so much you will all like them that way. The Band of Helpers is progressing finely I got any amount of new members this month and have 150 now. Also, lots of shops, especially about Bray, where I have a lot of members, have started money boxes for the society. I write on a card at the top what it is for and I have got a lot of money that way so far. Also, I have to get up a concert if I can, during November to try and turn a few pounds for extra warm things for the cold weather. I am sure it must be dreadfully cold at night now, but the thought of what you were all going through out in France makes us here at home all the prouder of you all. I am sure we are going to give the Germans a beating they won't forget in a hurry, and which they richly deserve. I had quite an adventure here the other day, and thought I had caught a German spy. A young man came to the door selling things in a basket and speaking very broken English. I happened to meet him on my out, and thinking he looked rather a suspicious person, and you know, we all have spy fever nowadays. I thought I'd accost him by speaking German to him and ask him what nationality he was. You never saw anyone so surprised as he was when he heard me speak in German to him, but he answered me back in the same language and had the cheek to say he was a Russian, which of course I didn't believe, and told him so, saying I was convinced er war ein Deutscher and that we wanted none of them over here. He then produced a Russian passport and would have had, had me believe all Russians spoke German, which was rather too much. However, I finally got rid of him. I told the police about him next day and I hoped they caught him safely. Any amount of the Belgian refugees have arrived in this country now. We all feel so dreadfully sorry for them. They must have suffered horribly. There are about 40 of them in different houses in Bray. I saw some of them the other day the Belgian flag implanted in front of the hall door. Some ladies got up a concert for them at which I was singing. We made quite a lot at it. I saw some of the refugees the other day. It must be awful for them having to leave their country and lose everything belonging to them. I hope so much that these cases will reach you safely this month and that you will like the things and that they are what you want. I would be ever and ever so glad if someone would send me a card today if the things arrive. I was so glad to get W. Clark's card the other day. I don't know if he is a Royal Dublin Fusilier or a Royal Flying Corps man. The card didn't say. And of course, I sent to the Royal Flying Corps monthly too. Look out in the Daily Mirrors which I have sent for the cartoon about the sad experiences of the Big and Little Willie. They're awfully funny. The latest name for the Kaiser I've heard is Swollen Headed Willie. It isn't bad, but I only wish his head would burst up and have done with all this horrid schemes once and for all. I must end up now. I wish I had some interesting news for you, but there is very little to tell. Goodbye, 
and may God bless and keep every one of you. From yours sincerely, Monica K. Roberts.